It's a relatively new form of art, and while alternative printmaking has long been popular overseas, in Australia support for the work is just hitting its stride. The Northern Territory is helping to lead that charge with two local pioneers of the art form exhibiting in Darwin. It's the largest exhibition of its kind ever held in the Northern Territory. It's a persuasive and a powerful art of protest, propaganda and people's politics. It's the exhibition the Territory had to have. Not Dead Yet is a collection of some of the best and boldest works from two of the Territory's most prolific artists. It's about giving voice to people um, and getting their views on things through as a message that's communicated in a very powerful visual way. You know, it's, it's nothing more or less than a, a propaganda uh, means. And, and, and that's true today, you know, it's, you know, that's about propaganda, it's about getting an image and a message across. The collection boasts more than 160 works from longtime local artists Therese Ritchie and Chips McAnulty. The show covers a range of themes, but the artists' approaches are very different. I love the process of documenting something and being at the same place every day and just taking photographs and seeing how things change. The work I do still looks like it's a screen print, so that's sort of fairly embedded in the practice, and that's the use of sort of you know, large areas of broad, flat, bright colours and so on. A lot of the work that Trees and Chips were creating was once described as ugly art. It's not the first time in art history things like that have happened, and it's actually an indication that it's working. The statehood poster was probably the most controversial and the one that uh, raised the most ire of the government of the day. Dennis Burke went completely feral about it. If he'd just shut up about it, no one would have paid any attention to it. But then we had people sort of after he went feral, ringing up and sort of saying, well, when's the T-shirt coming out? Many of these works have been inspired by landmark events of the past three decades, and some are now part of the Territory's social and political fabric. Like the Uluru handback image, which became the logo of the park there. It's nice when you get a, an iconic image that sort of lasts. This is uh, one of my favourite to raise prints. This is uh, Mike Reed. He was the uh, Minister for Emergency Services when he was... Uh, seen up at um, King's Cross buying pornographic tapes of firemen. Chips and Teresa's images of local life are just really special. And the population of Darwin changes so quickly that those little pieces of life get lost. This is um, taken at the Beachfront Hotel uh, on Australia Day and it was a bikini competition and it's called Spot the Aussie. Long before Chips McAnulty's move to the Northern Territory in the early 80s, he was using art to express his political views. A lot of time when I should have been at school, when in fact I was in the city doing things political in groups like High Schools Against the War in Vietnam, um, later on a group called Resistance. This image was created by Chips McAnulty while he was still at school. It was picked up by the Sydney Morning Herald and made famous. So, so it was sort of a fairly flash introduction to, but that was produced some thousands of those uh, and posted up at high schools all over Sydney and New South Wales. Um, and that was my first hands-on in terms of getting sort of ink under your fingernails and so on. I've pretty much had dirty fingernails since then. But the art form has become less messy. New computer programs have transformed the photography and screen printing tools of yesteryear. When um, I met Chips and we began to work together, there was, we did a lot of things by hand. Still used the dark room and bromide camera and hand cut everything. Advances in technology mean the artists can now merge and paint their images on screen. 
It's a process they use to great effect in the parliamentary portrait of the Speaker Jane Agard. Last work that we both worked on, which was the portrait of Jane Agard, I estimate we spent about 250, 300 hours on that. And that's far longer than a, an oil painter would have taken. There's 31 different photographs that I took of different parts of her. Because I want the ear to be, to be fully um, sharp and the nose and the hair. I'm, you know, I want everything to be right, so I build it. This exhibition has been years in the making and the images are a unique reflection of the Territory's colourful recent history. Hey, this is it, this is who we are, you know. But on the other hand, this is also about people and people's power and foibles and strengths and weaknesses and some of the good things that happen but also some of the bad things that happen. The exhibition Not Dead Yet will be on display at Charles Darwin University until late September.